I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, Bell Snow Comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you? It is weird. This is you're... the closest we've ever sat <laughs> doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird that you're here, because now, at least at the hurtful, other... Hurtful, hurtful. Well, at the other place, I could turn to you. Like, any other time we've been together before this, I could turn right. to you, look at you, whatever. And this one, it feels odd to look at you, because you're too... Well, it's because we're doing the video version, and we're only I'm, doing it on the one camera. I'm explaining to the listener. I'm with you, but... So we had to sit a little bit closer, uh, and yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw an arm Don't around him. do that. Oh, please. come on. You love it. We're buds. If you have to tell someone they love it, they don't. <laughs> As a general rule... If you have to say you love it, fair. Probably, that is fair. You know, that is a fair statement. But mm-hmm. this guy, though, he does love it. He's. I've never felt him like pull away so hard. You tensed up there. Yeah, yeah. Because I let's was, talk about your problems with intimacy. I was talking about why. how I didn't love it before, <laughs> and then you. But it's fine. It's okay. That's just yeah. you know how anyway. how you are. Um, Not to be too visual, but yeah, we're sitting right next to each other. Yeah, because I'm in New York for. We are both in New York. Yeah, you're about to leave though. Yeah, I leave tomorrow, but <laughs> we're in New York right now. Yep, right yeah. now. Um, so how was it getting in? Uh, it was it was all right. You know, we got in kind of late last night. Jess, mm-hmm. if you hear any clicking, that's also Jess taking some pictures. That's oh, okay. Yeah, We've yeah. done that before in an episode. We're getting, yeah. getting some photos done while we're recording. Um, it was good. So on the the flight out, uh, so Jess was window seat, I was middle, and there was a guy on the aisle, and he, you know, when the flight first took off, like I just had headphones in, was chilling. It was actually like the most calm I've probably ever been because I don't really love flying. And I was actually like really just kind of like relaxed. We mm-hmm. we had several um, margaritas before we got in the plane too, so that probably helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I just noticed the dude next to me. He's real. It's like he's really uncomfortable and keeps like leaning forward and like just is like really kind of having a hard time. And then I want to say we're probably like twenty minutes into the flight. Maybe we weren't that far I, into I it. Right. I can't, honey. No one will be able to hear you say that whole thing. I was just looking for like a that, yes. That is what is, I, <laughs> I. I hope they can hear. Jeez. <laughs> well, I just say from here they wouldn't be able to. Hear so that. what? So what happens? So he's freaking out, and then he. Where then I finally had to like stop and check in on him. It's because I saw him grab the vomit bag and he like shook it out, but then put it back, but then like kept checking on it. Mm-hmm. And I finally was just like, I took my headphones on. I'm like, hey man, are you? You good? Like, what's up? And then he was having a panic attack, he told me. Now, is have you taken off yet? Yeah, yeah, we're in the air by now. Yeah. Oh, okay. by the time you so start, you're yeah, sorry. checking on him to be like, do I need to let you out of the aisle so you can go to the bathroom? Well, no, but he's so on can... the aisle, so I don't need to let him out at all. Oh, he is on the aisle. Okay. I was more just checking. Like, I just really didn't want a guy vomiting next to me, was my thing. Uh huh. And I it just... would have been a terrible experience for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, would be, it would be a horrible experience. Well, no, for but Logan, I, but no, I wanted to see if totally I totally different person. I wanted had to see a panic it. attack and threw up no, their no, no. guts. Okay, no, no, I didn't know he was having a panic attack. All right, no, I just fair saw enough. him. I just saw him grabbing the bag. I wanted to see because I couldn't tell if he was like sick or was just having like a hard time. Yeah, you know what's funny is that on this in this situation, yeah. someone that's gonna hijack the play and somebody scared of a hijacker look exactly the same. <laughs> They have they have the same level of like nerves. They have the same like, Ooh, okay, all right, yeah, oh, be with me, God. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like for those early few seconds, minutes, you can't, you can't really, tell. you can't tell if you're like, is this the guy or should right. I help this guy? When I was thinking, I just couldn't tell like what was going on with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, because just because he was like, he wasn't just if he was just going like. <sighs> Like then I'd be like, okay, he's gonna definitely just throw up. He's just he- oh, okay. <laughs> no, but I'd be like, he's definitely sick. Yeah. But the fact that he was so fidgety and like kept like not sure what to do with himself, I'm like, he may just be having like a freak out. Yeah. So thank you for turning this into me being a selfish villain because the whole point of it was I actually took my headphones out and I I talked to him for the rest of the flight. Yeah. Just to calm him down, and he was very kind. I'm very glad because that could have backfired. What and I- you know my hatred of talking to people anywhere. What I like is if you 
there should be a, a whole storyline of you being an anti-hero of like you talking people off of ledges that are like about to commit suicide because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to see a dead body. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're like you're like telling the dude you're on the bridge with the dude and you're like, listen, if you jump right now, I don't um, know if I would ever be able to unsee. And I go this route to get home every day. So you so would be ruin, ruining my commute for the rest of my life. You're going to fuck up this whole block for me. Yeah, and I don't need that. I yeah. live nearby. Do you don't do you really want me to have to go around? Don't, don't do this to me. Yeah, don't do this to me, sir. And your then, fam- I don't care about your family. Yeah. I do not care about your family. I need to make that very clear. Yeah, don't do this to me. And then he's like, you know what? You're right. I should kill myself at home. <laughs> Great, because I don't know where that is. Yeah. So you do it. Okay. So then this is you helping this person. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't expect it to be me become the villain so quickly in the story, but yeah, it was no, me. No, I was saying it would be it funny. If... No, I know. But no, it was me. Uh, uh, yeah. Then I then I just talked to him the whole time, and mm-hmm. it, which helped him calm down. He was very grateful, and he mm-hmm. was a very nice guy. Yeah. Nice talking to me. He lives in, in New York. Uh, but yeah, he was just having a, a panic attack, and so we, we talked about it. Because I've, I've had panic attacks, so I'm like, listen, I get it. Yeah, and, yeah, and so we just talked for the uh, the rest of the oh. flight, and then uh, and then that was it. And then when we got into our Uber, I always like talking to Uber drivers, particularly in New York. I like New York Uber drivers, but by that point, I'd spoke on a whole flight, so I was I was silent. Yeah, you're pretty spent. <laughs> I, I I have so much uh, I don't know small talk in me. I feel okay, so I feel like I I I don't want to overshoot it. But I could easily say that maybe a tenth of the stories that are told to me that I tell on the podcast mm-hmm. are Uber drivers. Oh, absolutely. Like I like because you even saw in DC when we were in DC, I just ask them, I'm like, what's the longest yeah. ride you ever had? What's the craziest absolutely. ride you've ever had? Blah, blah blah. And sometimes they give you nothing. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. they're like, Hey, drunk people drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, all right, there's not a lot to pull yeah. from there. Or some give you the vibe of just like, oh, they just they want to just do their job and just yeah get you out of the car. <laughs> yeah, but every once in a while, somebody's thirsty to tell you. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> we the, we had the one of the guys in DC was that was just like he wasn't going off of like which one was that the uh, the guy who was talking about like comedy and stuff like that and oh yeah 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 his uh his eyes oh yeah what was the what happened so with he, that so. Our our uh, Uber driver in uh, our Uber driver in DC or maybe we were in Arlington for this one. I mean, they're and, right next to each other. And he was telling us, this is so funny. He was like, "I got the new iPhone, but they were trying to upsell me, <laughs> and so I wasn't sure if I was making the right decision." Because then some guy that was trying to upsell me was like, "No, you gotta get the latest version because." They're they're out here playing games with this middle one. You got to get like the tip top, and you got to get the most memory because you don't know it could be the end of the world. Like the dude was like really upselling him, and then he wasn't sure if he should even get a new phone because it's not like his regular phone was broken. Then he gets the the new phone, yeah, and it was he, like the newest, the newest, newest yeah. at the time. And then he plugs it in, and it's supposed to have this great battery life and everything, and. Uh, he kept saying it, it, he was looking at it, he, he kept saying 50%. Yeah. And no matter how much he charged it, no matter what he did, it kept yeah. saying battery life 50%. And he and was like, what the fuck? 50, and it went to 50% early in the day after yeah. him charging it, which was especially why he was like, what's happening? This is crazy. Yeah. This is supposed to be a better battery, but it's at only at 50% ever. Yeah. And then he finally put on his reading glasses yeah and realized it wasn't 50 it was 5g it said 5g in the corner yeah it had been saying 5g all day all day he was like this battery trash (laughs) (laughs) which is which is also good to tell you uh while he's driving you around to be like listen yeah i can't see great because he didn't have glasses on while he was driving that is true actually (laughs) Now so that you say that, he was not wearing glasses. Because he told us at the end of the trip, he told us all this. So at the very end of the trip, he's telling us this story. So outside of that, he, we're just chatting about comedy, like that. <laughs> this is the last story he tells us before we get out. And as I'm getting out of the car, I look at his face, and I'm like, this man doesn't have glasses. I, I didn't think of that until this second, until you just said I, that. I couldn't that he stop was... thinking about that. I thought about that. I, I thought that's also... 
I don't know. I thought no. that was also on your mind. I was like, this man has been driving us around blind. <laughs> no, I didn't think about that at all. Because he drove us from Nando's to the venue. Yeah, so it's yeah, not yeah. like, because here's the thing. When you're doing that, so when we were at Arlington <laughs> Draft House, the hotel is very close to the club. So Super then close. It's like you could walk, but it's a 20 minute walk or it's like a five minute, you know, cab. It's very hot or whatever. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we kept taking the Uber because yeah. we were like, it, it's it's nothing, you know? It's like six bucks and it's a quick conversation, whatever. But this time we were at a restaurant and then getting the Uber from the restaurant to mm. the venue. And so that was like quite a, and he had to get on the highway at one point and then get off of it. I, I think, the idea that he just did all that and he maybe couldn't no, see. With no sight. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think of that till just now. That's yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, you seem like in that area, you have to just constantly get on the highway, too. It seemed like if we wanted to go anywhere, they had to do yeah. that little circle. <laughs> yeah, you have to do highway. a circle and then take, like, the second exit yeah. and you're across yeah, town. To, no matter where you want to go. Um, no, I just, okay. Wow. I did not think of that. till Because now, it's like now, this yeah. is a week later, my life is flashing before my eyes. A week later. <laughs> yeah, dude. When he told us that, I was getting out of the Uber and I was like, what i didn't even connect that's why i didn't laugh that much (laughs) because this dude's like laugh and you're laughing you're like ah ha 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 ha." like like he was like i was just giving him a laugh because he said it was the like the funniest thing that ever happened to him recently and And i just funny it's funny it was like it's you know it's fine i just wanted to give him you know but it is a good audience member you you were but (laughs) i was like walking in the club like okay you're over here like this is the other thing that was kind of like it, it's it's when I decided to just not bring it up. Yeah. Because I thought it was also on your mind. No, I wish we you would have said something. After we got out of the Uber, you were quiet. Like, I was quiet. I don't know if you were on your phone or something. But then when we get inside, you're all about, like, when the show's starting. And I'm like, hey, we just got drove around <laughs> by a dude who can't see. <laughs> No, and like it, and so you're over here asking like so you think we'll start like maybe in in 10 or like like he's going up to the manager being like hey do you know when um, i was being professional you, know, you can just say the one word i was being professional you'd be a very very uh on point very professional but in a way as if you didn't just escape death and so then i'm standing there like look like just staring in front of me and <laughs> And you're like, okay, so okay, good, 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 and and you know, capacity's good, like just <laughs> well, because we were getting there like right at showtime, and we were bringing food to the staff too, wasn't it yeah, that day? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were yeah. like, I also wanted to make sure like we got that part done, and then got backstage to the green room and stuff. I was, I was just shifting into to work mode once we got there. I wasn't uh, whatever, man. That was <laughs> that was. That was upsetting. Don't worry. After my set, I was contemplating my life and mortality. But, you know, that's just because, you know, that, that first one, I didn't feel great. But <laughs> Damn. No, it was terrible. Damn. Yeah. I didn't think about that at all. Yeah. I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder, you know, how they had the Uber papers come out this week. Have you seen no, that? No. What was that? Oh, it's, it's pretty horrible. Tell me about it. I, I don't even know enough about it to talk about it at length, but basically there are these internal papers that I guess got leaked or are there or there may be court documents on a lawsuit or something. But basically the public now knows that Uber knows as they expand that they're like crushing the economies of like the places that they move into as far oh. as like the 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 gig economy there. Right. Like, yeah. Like they already know. They're smart enough to have done the math to know that you're not going to really make the money that that mm-hmm. people assume they're going to make. Uh, and then there's also something about how they leveraged they they leveraged a thing going on in South Africa where the cab drivers there were getting very like um, agitated and and sometimes maybe even violent around Uber moving there and everything. Oh, okay. And they leverage that to be like, see, why do these people not want you to have good prices? Like it was, it was oh, kind of like it was vilifying it, them. And- yeah. And so they've, they've done a lot of stuff like that a few times and it's all in these documents and it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Oh. So I wonder if there's Didn't just a that. floating document out there of like, Hey, you know, Sam can't see, right? <laughs> Like, I would love if it's all, like, super it's, technical yeah. corporate stuff. And then just this thing about this one driver who's been driving people around with not the best yeah. 
eyesight. And he also keeps telling people. He tells people. He's so honest. He tells every ride his, he's been his in. His driving is fine. He needs to just stop telling people. These they, eyes are not it. They wouldn't be worried about it if he didn't tell them. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. So that that has also been on my mind, along with the... <laughs> those, those two things in yeah. tandem. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. So you took the Uber, you were quiet in the Uber. Correct. What was what was the experience like from then to now? So you took the Uber late to get to yeah. your Airbnb. Right, yeah, because we didn't get into town until like, like a quarter to midnight or something. So. Okay. So yeah, so then we just got to the Airbnb and we just, I don't know, went to bed and then we had a pretty lazy day today because we were all week. Well, I'm here for three weeks, but Jess is here for the whole week too. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, we, today we didn't really do much that's uh, worthy of a story. I don't know. No, it doesn't. Had a, had a good sandwich. Yeah, it doesn't have to be mm. worthy of a story. Um, yeah, that's about you're, it. We, you're going you're gonna to probably have... Plenty by the time you Oh, by the time I leave here, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a changed man. Yeah, I just I feel like it is getting a bit more um intense in the time since you were last here. Oh good. Jess, you hear that? There's just there's It's more it's more intense now. Does that excite you? Okay, good. Yeah, she's nodding. She's she looks very excited and not worried at all. There's a level of tense that's here now that's just a bit extra where it's like what like in what way what is what are you noticing this oh i'm now i wish she wasn't like, in the room she is not happy well uh, like <laughs> i was on the train i mean i think all three of these are going to be on the train i was on the three train of these and, three intense uh, stories this guy was talking to himself and he was talking to himself very aggressively so mm. whatever he was going on in his head even if he was a wild dude just talking to himself he was not being kind to himself in these moments you know so whatever inner what? demon he was talking to he was calling it by its demon name like <laughs> he was cursing up a storm at himself he's really what? like looking down what, whatever not... argument he was having in his head he was losing it's, yeah it's rare you lose the arguments in your own head but and, he found a way and then this random guy is like what'd you say to me what'd you say to me and then he looked up, and he was like, not talking to you, dog. Talking to me. And the other guy was like, oh, okay then. And then they both carried on being very angry See, and quiet. Now and it's that like, is that actually, thing is, though, that's is, a beautiful story in my mind. Oh, uh, There's a moment where it's not beautiful, where you think they're definitely about to bite each other. Oh, no, for it was sure. Like, it was like, it was so... For no reason, because it's not like the guy was being like hella loud, right? So that other guy had to be loud to get his attention to be like, "What are you? <laughs> yeah, who are you talking to?" And the guy was like, "I'm talking to myself." Right. And I, the thing that I appreciate most about that thing is that initially I thought this dude was like out of his mind, right? Yeah, you know I mean, and then it it's nice when someone is out of their mind, oh, and then shit. they snap. What's up? Hold on. No, the camera went out of focus because I moved. It freaked out. <laughs> oh. I had to get my phone and it freaked. It's uh. Yeah. Speaking of glasses, let me. There we go. We look good. All right. It's nice when someone is like out of their mind and they actually snap into it for a second. Yeah, especially there he snapped into it to uh, alleviate a potential conflict. That's rare. Yeah, yeah. That's and it's super just, rare. I feel like before he would have just talked to himself and no one would have said anything. I feel like that like that other guy clearly oh, wanted a fight. So the other guy is the new tension. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just not letting him be and do his thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then also, this is maybe... Maybe when I came back from Arlington, there was a guy who had a bag mm-hmm. of sodas, okay. right? But not like a bag full of cans of soda. I'm talking about he had a genuine bag full of liquid. (laughs) Full of loose soda. Full of loose soda. (laughs) So he had a bag of soda Mm -hmm. that was like clearly a bunch of sodas. Right. Because it wasn't dark brown enough to be just Coke, but it was light brown. 
and it was like it was okay. like okay this looks like it could be i mean maybe it was rc who knows i was gonna say be rc or maybe a maybe a, a lipton iced tea <laughs> but it seems like a bunch of sodas a bunch of something this, you don't want him spilling in right this now. clear bag yeah. yeah and the bag i don't know how this man did it but the bag is tight the so, bag is like so you say a clear bag is like a clear shopping bag or yeah, a clear shopping bag like tied up in a knot up top full of soda like <laughs> where you can see you can see the bubbles so it's definitely carbonated it's definitely carbonated cuz you can see the bubbles <laughs> he's just got like a bag of soda i feel like i've told you about something like this happening before cuz i know one time i was around this dude whose soda spilled in his bag and then it was like full of soda but that, this is that one different... i remember but this is pre-spilled in the bag this is intentionally poured in the bag no this is intentionally bag. all in the bag there's nothing in this bag but it's, soda and especially in a, a shopping bag too and then like tied up like like a like a bindle sack yeah, to, like to, in to a hop, knot. To hop the rails. Yeah. <laughs> in a knot, there's just this huge oh, bag. That's wonderful. Of soda. And basically, <laughs> he's not like being careless with it. I need to point that out. It's not like this dude this is, is precious cargo. Yeah, it's not like this dude is trying to be reckless and dangerous with this bag, right? right? Not threatening anybody with the bag, anything. But. <laughs> He's walking up and down the the train car. Mm. And so everyone that's on the train car for more than a couple stops is noticing that this is a bag of soda. It's a it's hard to not notice, I would gather. Yeah. Yeah. And we all just get tennis ball eyes. You know, like in a in a Wimbledon match where you see the, the heads go, like we're all just watching <laughs> the bag go back and forth. Because everyone is perplexed where it's like Okay, so is this bag about to pop or spill or yeah, whatever, right? Yeah. And then after that is then just why. Why yeah. why and how? We're 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 all Yeah, you're I'm going to have to clear the music that drives by every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get Billy a copy Joel. a copyright strike. Yeah. <laughs> because of the random vehicles driving by. I think it needs to be more than 3 seconds to be a copyright issue. It it does, I think. I think we're safe. Um Unless somebody just parks, yeah. decides to <laughs> yell up, and you hear nothing but the new Pusha yeah. T album, and then I just uh, yeah, we'll yell out then and be like, "Can you guys put on something royalty free, please? Thank yeah. you. Just some jazz, please. Some jazz, some some uh, uh you know uh you know uh, itsy bitsy spider. Some uh, <laughs> that's not gonna help us. Uh, happy birthday over and over again. Maybe uh, so that's you know that's that only became public domain a few years ago. So there's this bag. Sure. And in the bag is is like swashing. So so it's not like it's tight to the point where there's no movement of the liquid. That would there's be a, there's very a, impressive. It, it would was, be. If it was airtight in a bag like that. If it was just a bubble with handles, that'd be fine. That'd be amazing. Yeah. It's almost that, but there's just enough room for a right. little bit of swashing. He, he has not perfected it yet. And so he's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we're just wondering whose day is going to be ruined. Because when this bag goes, yeah. it's going to it's gonna take a couple people with it. This, is, this like, is an unfortunate game show. It's getting to the point where as he's pacing back and forth, and it looks like, I don't know if this is going to make sense, but he looks like someone who would have a bag of soda. Like like he like I don't know how better to describe it except he looks like a person who would have a bag of liquid that yeah. is tied up and he's gonna open it and I guess pour it on his head later or just stab See, it with a straw and, and go to that, town. Oh boy, that would be the best if he <laughs> if he just pulled out a straw and then drank the whole bag. Yeah. Would be amazing. But no, I people do that with um uh, with uh Capri they don't Suns? they don't stab it but uh sometimes you you can catch somebody with like a box of wine which is basically just a bag of wine just yeah those those little ones yeah just yeah, yeah. Themselves, oh for sure for sure know. yeah no that it's that makes sense it's meant for that you mm -hmm. can do that mm -hmm. but not uh not your, bag, not so. your not your homemade soda capri sun that you've made and but he's like i'm i'm trying to imagine what he looks like and i have an idea but i have a feeling if i saw him i'd be like okay also should point out there was a point where when I saw him with the bag, I obviously saw the carbonation, the bubbles, everything. But there was a split second where I was like, 
that man is like I thought there was a bag of pee, and I thought yeah. that he was very sick because if your <laughs> pee is carbonated, you have a too much cola. When it's that dark too, that yeah. man, that man is dehydrated. That man is dying. That man, I don't know how he filled a bag yeah. by being that dehydrated. I honestly think he must be taking this bag to the doctor. <laughs> To be like, listen. This is how much comes out, and it's this color. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Also, it's fizzy. So it's fizzy, too. If you can tell me what new thing I have, that would be great. <laughs> and so, basically, we're, we're watching this dude up and down, up and down, up and down. And then, <laughs> finally, this guy gets on with an umbrella. And okay. just, just perfectly, as this dude is shaking out and tying up the strap of the umbrella and turning around, he turns into <sighs> the guy with the bag of soda. And you know the little spikes that are completely unnecessary on umbrellas? Yeah. You know those things that don't help stop the rain at all? I don't know why they're spiked ends to every umbrella yeah, that's it, yeah. ever been invented. The Mad Max part of the, the yeah. umbrella. Yeah. And you never know. He turns in. And the whole bag just goes. So it's like it it so clearly a thin bag too. Didn't took it, barely any. I think it is exactly one Walgreens bag <laughs> <laughs> that this dude has filled with soda. I'm Bold. surprised it wasn't dripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. If it, if it was that ready to pop by being just touched by an umbrella, yeah. So he touches with the umbrella. The thing starts to go, <laughs> and a bunch of people shoot up and walk away from sure. the from you know the splash zone but that guy that was <laughs> i felt so bad for the guy with the umbrella because he literally has it so he doesn't get wet <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, now this dude's calves are covered in cola now he's wet and sticky which you don't get from the rain <laughs> yeah now he needs rain yeah now he's going to go outside and he's like, fuck, I really wish it was raining. Now he's just going to go outside, <laughs> back of the leg first, <laughs> moonwalking in the rain <laughs> to try to get some of this sticky. Be because a, this guy doesn't know what it is. Travel. This guy, this guy new. just he's got new. on the train. Oh, one second, let me check on him. That's all right. Okay. Dog should, break. Should we pause the I'll, video since it's going to get weird when I get Sure, up? I'll just say dog break. We're back from the dog break. Yeah, what was I even talking about? Oh, the bag. Um, yeah, we yeah we we actually took a break on a cliffhanger there. <laughs> what will happen next with the bag of soda? Stay tuned. So the bag explodes like it ex like popped. It like didn't popped. just leak. No, it didn't just leak because that could that would have been very funny. It. No, it because he would have tried to catch it and it would have still been dripping and then like no. another one would have poked open. My man, this dude, this dude's back. This was a water balloon, a it soda really, balloon. It really split. <laughs> and so then it just is rushing. And honestly, a torrent, if you will. Honestly, more full than I gave it credit for. Like, he, got, he got a lot of soda in that bag. He got so much soda <laughs> in the bag that like so much came out, it felt like a cartoon. <laughs> Like, so much came out that I was like, how is it still? That's... And then the guy feeling it is terrified. Like, like Yeah. This, this, is a, this is a true nightmare to just have something, like, wet on the subway. Warm and sticky. Warm. Yeah. Was this heated up? I mean, I don't soda. think it was heated up, but if you're walking around with a bag of soda, <laughs> I can't imagine all you're keeping it cold. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So he filled this a while ago, and then it's, which would be impressive if he had it all day, and this mm -hmm. is the first trouble he's run into. Yeah, or maybe the initial trouble was why it ended up in the bag. He was carrying a, a twelve pack, and then they all burst somehow. I just, I, I don't know who I feel worse for. Because if you're carrying a bag of soda, that means it's your only option. You don't have another container; you'd use it. That, and it also means that soda is important to you. Mm -hmm. This. This soda means a lot. It, I'd that like it to needs think to he be. made it himself. That's a whole other upsetting scenario. Yeah. <laughs> that this is his homemade soda. He was fi he finally had the meeting with the big soda company for them to sample his flavor. 
<laughs> and he didn't realize, like, oh, I just ran out of my last bottle. I just ran out of my last bottle. What do I have? Maybe they like plastic flavor. I need to get down there so they can sample it and it can be in stores. Oh, no! And so then, basically, uh, that guy freaks out. Uh, a bunch of people jump away. It reminded me of, remember when we saw that lady throw up? I think about it every day. It was exactly like that, where people calmly ran away. Just like yep, they, yep. they calmly <laughs> rushed away. Yeah. Yeah, because that lady vomiting was that she just did it very calmly, and we're all like, well, all right, this is what's happening. We'll all scoot. I know we've talked about it on the podcast. We before, absolutely have. But what I love about that lady vomiting is that she went there, sat down with just a bunch of meat she just bought. Yeah, because yeah, it looked like she, she had, had a bunch of ground turkey. She just had like a, yeah, some sort of, it didn't seem like the bag she bought it out of either, right? No, it seemed, no, no, That no, also no. seemed like just a bag of meat. Yeah. That was she eating? I'm not sure. Yeah. And that's why she threw up, you're not supposed to eat raw ground beef on a moving train. I mean, too many stories converge in New York. Like, every place should have one of these people. You know, <laughs> there should be a soda guy in one state. There should be a meat lady in another state. They can't all be here. Well, this is where they come from. Then they spread out from here. Yeah, it's really upsetting. Uh, and then like now you just have a train full of soda, too, because now that whole area is just wet. Oh, yeah. Watching. OK, everyone that's that's been to or lives in New York knows what I mean when this happens. It doesn't happen every day, thank God. But there will be a time happens. where you're on the train and someone's bottle or can has spilled. And so now we're all with our eyes watching the trail, mm -hmm. the uneven trail mm -hmm. that the liquid makes. And you're checking, is that liquid coming to me? Is it taking a left? Is it going straight? Yep. And I wish I was better at physics. Wish I knew more about fluid dynamics to know where this is going to go. <laughs> I don't know how that would help in this situation. I feel I like know. you could look at it and you could have an idea of maybe what uh, what grooves. What? Uh... Yeah, that. I mean, that's also when you know you've been taking the train too much. When you're like, oh, we had Hoyt Skimmerhorn. This this liquid about to take a left. <laughs> no one wants to be that well versed <laughs> in something that nasty. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the train was full of li like I had to get on a different car, which I should have done. Yeah, but you way want, earlier, but I wanted to see you, the end. Exactly. No, you I just stayed. wanted to see it pop. That's why we all stayed on. Absolutely. We were, like, we were like, who fills a bag with that much liquid and gets away with it? Because honestly, even yourself, you're like, even if it's me, this is gonna be a hell of a story. Like, <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, that's of course you stayed to see if it was gonna. pop. I mean, if it that's was me, I, I think I'd be in jail. I don't. I don't think I would just let someone leak hot soda all over me and not okay. lay hands on them. <laughs> so you would have beaten the man with your umbrella. I think I would have tried to choke him. Wow. I think like wow. Like, I'm not a violent person, but that is so. It's so random that mm -hmm. I think you're allowed to lay hands <laughs> at that point. It's so random you're allowed a random act of violence. <laughs> it's it's actually it's so odd and so rare that I think even a monk would be like I renounce all violence except <laughs> if I'm on a train and someone splits a bag of hot cola <laughs> all over my ankles. <laughs> then then I can go to town on them. I am against violence unless you fucking spill on me and then yeah. Then it's on. Then it's on. Otherwise, I will not crush a fly, but I will not be sticky. Yeah. I won't even be mean to a cat, but if you get cola all over my calves, it's <laughs> over, kid. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> well, so then what was, I know then everyone like left. I'm, I'm One, I, how, how sad was the soda man? No, he was disappointed. For I real. was absolutely. Did he just sit there with his torn bag, just <laughs> looking? At no, no. That <laughs> and dude, just that sad Charlie Brown music comes in. That dude, 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 dude screamed dude. no way too loud, and then, <laughs> and then that was sort of it. <laughs> was it a short no, or was it like a no? <laughs> no it was pretty long. <laughs> oh, good. Cause it, cause it, it, it was a good being, dramatic no. It stopped being no, and then just started being <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Oh, that's a good no. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was wild. I was not a fan at all. Cuz then, then cuz now it's wet, sticky and loud in here. 
<laughs> I was I was so upset. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I'm filming a new special. It's gonna be called Wet, Sticky, and Loud. <laughs> That's gonna be the title. Uh, Sounds great. What? So then, what did? How did Umbrella Man react? I mean, obviously he was disappointed. But did he like? Did he I, shout? No, he, or did yeah, he? He was also screaming. He was also like, screaming. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for him, you have to keep in mind mm-hmm. that for him, he's just got on the train and he's closed his umbrella. Yeah, and then he feels however that soda felt. I just made it hot in my head. Maybe it wasn't hot. Either way, if you step onto a train and the first thing that happens is your legs get wet, you, I mean, yeah. you just have to assume someone is pissing on you. And so you've walked into a, 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 a current of because, piss. Because he looked dry, you could see his brain break for a second. Oh, absolutely. Where he's like, no, I'm inside. <laughs> How I didn't, am I getting this wet inside? I didn't see a bunch of water flow out, so I surely didn't step into... There's no way this should be happening. Yeah. And then he turned around, he saw the bag, and he just started screaming. But he was screaming more like, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? Absolutely. Well, I'm sure that he wants to say, the, what is that? Yeah. What did you just get on me? Yeah. But his brain probably can't even put that together. Because I mean, it's in his shoes. Like it's Ugh. it's. Le- I didn't. I honestly. It's legit everywhere. Josh, I didn't even think about it being in his shoes. I was just, I was literally only thinking of it on the legs. And now his shoes are filled with soda. Yeah. And he just has to just walk his way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to I think a fire to throw his clothes and shoes into. Just do a duck just for walk safety. home. I hope he was going home. That'd be terrible if he oh, was he's on, on his way to, way work. to dinner. <laughs> he's got, he's, oh, no, I've got a hinge date. Yeah. And I have to explain why, the, why from the knee down I'm wet and making squelching sounds. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third thing. Yeah. Um, the third thing was I... I, I I feel bad because I laughed at this really hard and I, I shouldn't have. <laughs> because people, everybody's different. Right. So I, I shouldn't have laughed, but it was my first reaction. Basically, I was on the train platform now and this uh, this person was using the elevator that's on the train. Now, not every... Uh, station is wheelchair accessible, but a mm-hmm. lot of them are, so you can use the elevator. Some parents use the elevator for their stroller. Yeah. So, uh, this one... For the ones who don't want the kids to have a really fun ride. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. For for people who want unshaken baby. Wee! Uh, so, this woman walks out of the elevator, which is already... I'm always surprised when the elevator opens, because I'm surprised anyone would take it. Like, I actually think it would be cleaner to just crawl up the steps than to be in that elevator. <laughs> right. Because that elevator is now a closed space of nastiness. Yeah. And a tight closed space. And they don't move quick either. Mm-mm. You get in and they sit there for a second. If you smell something, you're going to be smelling it for a it, while. It's, that is your smell now. And so this lady gets off the uh, elevator and she's pushing the stroller along. I don't know what bump she hit. I don't know. I I did not see what caused this, but her stroller starts to tip to the <laughs> side. And as it's tipping, she doesn't seem to be paying attention to the tip. So as it's tipping, she's still just pushing, but there's definitely been a bounce on the left side to where it's like it looks like it's about to go. And then she essentially just starts letting it fall over and it's not until her hands are maybe like a little too at an angle, like just a little too curved right. that she realizes like, oh, it's going. And so then she tries to save it. But whatever's in the carriage already starts spilling out. So it looks like this kid is about to fall out from the overcorrection. Okay. you I, The way you worded that, just like whatever is in the carriage, just like, and that is also soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be amazing if that was also just a bag of soda. A carriage full of soda. This is what people do now. We just haven't caught on. <laughs> I'm, wait, listen, we're trying to save the environment. Okay, we're getting rid of plastic. So now, sorry, you got loose soda now. Yeah. 
That's how it works. No more bottles, just plastic bags. You bring what you got. Those aren't worse at all. <laughs> Those aren't somehow less we, reusable. Well, well, you're reused. Yeah, exactly. You're bringing them in. Mm-hmm. You go down to the soda store, get whatever container filled, <laughs> and, then, and then you can go home. We'll fill whatever you got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we charge by weight here <laughs> at this at this store. Uh, so then overcorrects. It looks like the baby is going to tip out anyway. Mm -hmm. A different lady who sees the whole thing happen screams because now the baby's about to like hit the platform. Jeez. And once a baby hits the platform, you're done with that baby. Jesus, that's, Josh. No, but I'm saying that's that's an unusable baby now. Like tell me that that's a level of germs that that baby's encountered now that it'll never be the same. Oh, you're going off of germs. I thought we were going off of, you know, the the <laughs> The, the what? The impact. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If a baby's face touches a platform floor on the train, that's going to be a different person wow. now. Our, our prior. Well, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. That, yeah, that's going to no, be. Wait, no, no. Here's the. You're not wrong, but for, <laughs> you're right, but for the wrong reason. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like if and I I'm just saying. They have soft heads is where I'm coming from. I wouldn't from. even talk like this if when I was a baby, my face had touched the floor of the platform <laughs> on the train. God. I'd be a hardened individual. <laughs> I'd have a deeper voice. I would, like, <laughs> you're you're going to have a different life if the... Because just the, the film alone mm -hmm. that's on the platform of the train... Ugh. You've basically been kicked in the face by every shoe in New York if you let your face touch right. the platform <laughs> and you're a baby. Right. <laughs> to be fair, if you're a baby and your face touches the platform, it's only up from here. You know what I mean? You're not going to have a worse life than that. that. You, you just had the worst moment of your life. But you might not be old enough to know it, to appreciate that you've already had rock bottom. Never mind knowing it. It's happened. You're, oh. ne you're never going to have something this bad happen again. Right. But then someone's got to remind you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so so then uh, this other lady screams. The the woman stops trying to overcorrect the stroller now and mm -hmm. just goes to try to catch the baby. Oh. Hopelessly behind on the hands. The hands were not Jesus. fast enough. And then you, you actually hear like a slight splat. And then <sighs> people start running up to her. And it's a dog. Not it wasn't a baby in the carriage. It was no. A dog? This is a puppy. Okay. She had a dog in the carriage. Okay. The entire time. Okay. And the way that some people lost concern and the way that some people got angrier, right, was amazing to watch. I I bet I can tell you racially <laughs> <laughs> who, who felt who, what. Who, yeah, I can I can tell you exactly what camps. The the amount of people. <laughs> Because we're, we're also only talking about like five, seven people. So it's not like the entire train ran to check right, on this woman. Yeah. But the amount of people that ran up and like, <sighs> it happened to me as well because I didn't run, but I just was walking towards see if they're, right. they need any help. And I don't even, I wish I could see the face I made <laughs> before I realized it was a dog. Because yeah. cause when you think it's a baby and it's a dog, it it messes with your brain in a way that you're not you're not even registering the little like limbs that you're seeing. Yeah, and and because as I got closer, I was like, "This is a hairy this, baby." That's what touching the floor does. Is you <laughs> you immediately morph. <laughs> that's one of the animorphs. <laughs> it's just train that's, kids. That's what they have in, in the, the the prequel. They did animorphs. They get the power by licking a subway yeah. floor. Is what happens. And so I'm like, even as I'm kind of like. Walking over there, like, you know, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't run to help. But <laughs> <laughs> even as I'm sort of lightly strolling over mm -hmm. to see if anybody needs help or, you know, like what the damage is, anything, I'm just seeing now, because it was still as well, which didn't help, because now... <laughs> That's a jarring visual. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't seem hurt because when it gets up it just shakes yeah, and it's, it's, and a, it's a puppy fine. and it's, it's just like what happened yeah but for us we're like oh my gosh that baby oh no that furry baby died. oh no that ugly baby <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it, the order that things went was like 
<laughs> oh no, that baby. Then it was, oh no, that ugly baby. Then it was, oh, oh no. <laughs> And then it was O. Oh. Oh. And then for some people it was and then oh. if, And then if you're white, it was oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like one guy got particularly mad at her. Like she did drop a baby. Like like she tipped it on purpose or? No, he just, he was like being weird about it. It's like, it's okay. Like he was like checking on it, but he was like weird with her. Mm-hmm. And then some people didn't even make it far enough to, I guess, really see that it was a puppy. As soon as they saw something get up on four, <laughs> they were like, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> nope, this lady's got a carriage full of rats. I'm out yeah. Here. But yeah, the amount of people that switched. That, was yeah. like, it wasn't half, but it was like three. <laughs> and I was not one of them. No. Like, I, I actually, sadly, I kept the same amount of care the entire time. <laughs> Like, for me, I was like... Yeah, Josh, you maybe lived here a little too long. (laughs) Yeah, because for me, I was like, oh, no, that baby fell. Because I've seen babies Uh, fall before. Like that? Like, this wasn't a tall... Like, it's not like a Tom and Jerry tall stroller or anything. It's just... Tom and Jerry stroller. Do you know the ones that look like they're from the 50s that are really high? Yeah, the old school... uh, Yeah. Oh, I can't think of the... It wasn't one of those. They have a specific name, don't they? So it's literally like dropping it a foot and a half. So oh, it was like a, like an actual like a modern baby stroller. Where it's like just yeah. a, like a little seat you're pushing. Yeah. So. so I was like, I was like, oh, that's no. already not made for dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder the dog fell out of it. No wonder that <laughs> white guy was mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't do that. Just walk it. Yeah. It's got so many legs. Mm-hmm. It can walk. Its paws are made for dirt. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was uh that was that one was a roller coaster. I'll say that that was a. Hmm. That was a journey of a story. I re- I felt like I fell out of a baby carriage. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully our listeners are still with us and not like, you lost me a baby carriage. None That's of- the thing. I, w- I do want to know if some turned it off the second you were like, <laughs> this baby carriage was tipping. Yeah. <laughs> Probably when you said, <laughs> then you can't use that baby anymore. So maybe they're like, okay, this, this is a story. <laughs> this is a story about a baby getting injured. No, no. I'm just saying. It's like, that's a different kid. <laughs> it's a hardened child now. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, that kid's the parent now. Sorry. Yeah. You answer to it. Uh, should we open up the mailbag, my dude? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. I do want to go to. We had some Instagram questions that were sent to me. Hi, Logan. This is probably a really weird thing to do because I don't know you or Josh personally, but I find myself in need of advice. We've never, we don't really get asked like straight up advice a lot. Yeah. So um, I thought it'd be interesting to see how we uh, fuck this up. Uh, you and Josh talk about relationships a lot on the podcast. I really love the show. I listen to the episodes on repeat because they help me, uh, make me feel less anxious when my thoughts are swirling. I'm also the one who wrote in with the story about the class hamster that got eaten by the class snake. Oh, killing him. Yeah, yeah. Killing him. <laughs> um, so, this is a little personal, but I've been with someone. We both really like each other, but... We have some love language clashes that keep making things hard. So I guess what I'd like to ask is, how did slash do you know that it's worth the struggle to stay with someone? Is it normal to have to continually work on things? As someone with anxiety, do you have it about do do or oh, do you have it about your relationship, even though it's a strong one? Also, I'm a total stranger, and I understand if you and Josh don't want to answer these. Uh, do you want to go first? Uh, if you got something, go for it. Oh, okay. This will be I, fun to answer to with my girlfriend staring at me. So this will be yeah. a very interesting experiment for me. I personally don't believe in love languages. I think I really that, thought he was just going to end at love, and I was going to be like, "Whoa!" No, I just <laughs> I think it was a it was a. We've talked about that before too. That neither of us are really. Yeah, because my thing is, at the end of the day, no one actually has to be nice to you, and so. When someone is kind to you in the way that they are best able or best know how to be kind, Mm -hmm. it's actually a really dickish thing to be like, yeah, but it's not the way I like it. It's like, that's wild. Like, I like, like if someone, I understand that not every gift is going to be, um, 
received in the way that it was intended, and not every gesture is going to be understood in the way that it was intended. But you can't tell me that it's not actually kind of a pretty bad move to be getting all of something from someone and then be like, yeah, but it's not the one I want, so it doesn't count. That's kind of that's kind of wild. Like I'm not right. saying that that's what this person is doing. Right. I'm just saying that what quickly happened with love languages, it started out as a good way to almost like a fun little personality test and a good way to communicate. And, it, and like a shorthand that you could have to kind of to classify some things. Yeah. Which, for that, it was okay. And what quickly what it quickly turned into was a way for a lot of people to be kind of bratty. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I just and and I think that my my and I could be wrong about this, but I find that like it is a way to sidestep appreciation and like gratitude for the person, even if that's not what you like. Just a mat, like like I'm not even talking about your relationship or anything. I'm saying in the right. world, imagine a world. Where someone comes home to, because because we have these like um, you know physical touch, uh, acts of service, gift giving, like, gift giving, all that stuff like that. Yeah. Imagine a person comes home to a fully cooked meal and their favorite movie on cue to watch, and their reaction is, "It's not a blowjob though." That's not a good person. <laughs> That's not that like and I and I worry that more and more people are going to fall into that type of thinking, even though it's not exactly that, because to me, love languages have quickly been like overused. It's kind of how people self-describe as whatever the hot thing is that year. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's uh, sometimes it's a I don't know. It's like almost like a. We, I think we talked about this too when we did the re, like the relationship quiz episode that we did, mm-hmm. where it is kind of a step right next to like astrology, where it's yeah. like, oh, you were born during this month, we're not going to get along, and it's like, well, you don't have, you haven't even met me yet. Yeah, and also we don't know like for the love language thing, I'm sure that the best of each one of those things is too dope to turn down. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so right. so if, if if I love a person and my act of service is taking them for a weekend to their favorite city on a private jet, mm. I don't think they're going to be like it's not physical touch, right? Yeah, you know I mean, well, and and I want to, so I'm I'm, I'm going to take a slight counterpoint. I agree, I agree with what you're saying, but mm-hmm. also on the other side of that of the the clash of love languages, where I agree with you that like to me they don't mean the same thing that they do to some people, whatever. But I have been in the relationship where I have dated someone and told them, be like, hey, I don't, please stop just giving me presents all the time. Like, I don't, I don't really want all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But they're like, but it's my love language. And so they just kept doing it. Like, when you hit that point, then yes, it can become an issue. So, like, if they're not mm-hmm. respecting you saying, like, oh, I, this, I, I would prefer this. If you guys have talked about it and there's not a, mutual respect to how each other because i sometimes they i think people get focused so much on how they what love languages are and how they show it but don't always consider how it's received to other people yeah yeah it's no, more I'm about like you. well this is how i show love so you have to be okay with it it's like well yeah but sometimes no sometimes it's too much some people don't like public you know pda or anything sure or, sure you know or they they like a lot of alone time or whatever and that's a balance you have to find so i think if if they're not respecting it then yeah i think that's an issue yeah and, that that then lends itself to yeah a different a different thing than what i'm talking about specifically no and that's i know what you mean i was just yeah yeah um, but as also the thing too of like, do relationships take a lot of work? Do they continue being work? Yeah, I, not in like a. It shouldn't be like a fight every day. It shouldn't be like I, I think we've got to this point because we. I think it's particularly our generation. We were kind of the last generation with parents who were just like, you just stay together, okay? You know, it was like the generation before us was the first ones who started like actually mm-hmm. divorcing if things weren't good. You know what I mean? But before that, it wasn't really. Yeah, you know, you yeah. just you just stayed together, and you're just like, yeah, marriage sucks, and you just have to deal with it. Okay, there was a lot of that, and I think yeah. our generation went the counterpoint of trying to be like, you know what? But everyone has their own thing. But a lot of us convinced ourselves that relationships don't take work, and they do. You're living with a person. Yeah, you yeah. are spending all of your time with another human being who is completely different from you, even if you're similar. 
they're a completely different person. Yeah, you're going to yeah. clash. You're going to have issues. But it's how you resolve the issues, you know? Yeah, I think Hi, that... Hi, Jess. <laughs> I think that for, for a good portion of it, the other thing to keep in mind with, with your overall question is that I think I've talked about this on podcasts before and with friends before, but to me, the the world overall is, especially if you talk about, like, I don't know if they're writing in from, from the States or not, but a lot of the world is easier to live in than it's ever been, right? So you used to have to hunt or farm, you used to have to, like, worry about a harvest, you used to have to plan more to eat. You I'm excited to, to see where this point goes. But, like, being in an inter like an interpersonal relationship is as hard as it's ever been. So it's as hard to raise a child as it's ever been. And it's as hard to stay with a person as it's ever been. But as the other things get so much easier and easier and easier, now the distance between like being in a relationship and staying in one and the other hard things that you have to do in your day is actually getting further and further away, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there's almost a lack of uh, practice with doing hard things that then makes it feel like, oh, wow, if, if this thing is such an inconvenience in my life, maybe I should just get rid of it. Because a lot of inconveniences to our lives do either get solved or we get rid of them, whether yeah. it's through like money or the way we do things. So you used to have to walk. If you want to get there, you got to walk. Mm -hmm. Then we had horses. Then we had cars. Then you had to have a car. Now it's... Mm, I need to get over there, and I don't want to take the train or the bus or what. Let me, I'm just going to order an Uber. Let me use my magic pocket computer and yeah. have, have a driver come get me. Yeah. yeah. But another person not understanding what you're saying when you try to tell them as plainly as possible is as hard as it's ever been. Right. So that's staying the same. And yeah. all and I'm not saying people's lives aren't hard or because we have tech it's not it, it's an easy life. I'm just saying that so many problems are getting solved all day and little problems, things that you you might not even consider a real problem. You don't even have to think about. You sure. can now order something, you can get you you don't even have to read the manual and put the bookshelf together. You can hire a task rabbit and they'll come to your house and mm -hmm. put it together for you. I'm saying that the the thing of raising a person or being in a relationship, those things are still very difficult. Oh, for sure. And that threshold is is getting harder and harder to for anything in your life to match with outside of maybe work stuff. Yeah. Well, and I think too, we're, you know, we focus more on, you know, I guess being more mentally healthy in relationships than we ever used to. That used to never be a conversation mm -hmm. about how to like maintain your mental health in a relationship. It used to literally just be do they hit? Yeah, and then that's and then that's and then it. the next like, question was a lot. Yeah, and then it's like, bro, she not hitting you. She, I, right. yeah, yeah, you know. So it was it was always that. So I think now this is the first time we're in like human history where we're like really taking the time to be like, oh, is my mental health good around this person? Mm -hmm. People used to never ask themselves that question. It was yeah, just like yeah. I'm with this person, and that is how it is. Yeah, is how that used to be. It used to just be I cry after I cook, and that's just life. Yeah, and I guess that's what it is, huh? It's like oof, another day. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I think also with that, and that's a good thing. I'm not saying that is a bad thing. That is a good thing that we're doing. I think we don't. We don't quite, yeah, it's like, kind of like you said, we just don't know how to balance that yet. And yeah. so I think sometimes when we realize like, oh, this relationship's kind of stressful, I should probably just get out of it. And it's like, and sometimes, yes, you know, I, I'm not going to say like, you should stay in all of them. Uh, no, like, yeah, get out of it if it's like you feel bad all the time, especially if like you, like if the person comes home and that's, that elevates you and makes you feel bad. Yeah, that's probably your sign. But if it's like, oh, when we're working on issues, I'm stressed out. Well, yeah, that is going to be stressful. That's yeah. going to be a stressful thing. And sometimes, though, that's very much... Sorry, just got something in my eye. Ow. <laughs> sometimes that is very much worth the stress. If I can go ahead, since you're here, to use us as an example. Like, yeah, we've had some, not like issues of necessarily fighting, but like where we want to end up, where we want to move, career stuff, whatever. Yes, sometimes that leads to a lot of stress. We've had, you know, not too long ago, we had like a whole week where we were just stressed out. We weren't necessarily fighting, but we were just stressed. And then we talked more about it, and we not only talked more about what we wanted together, but we wanted more, you know, even just personally on our own. 
And honestly, over that, I feel like we got over the hump. We found something that felt good to both of us. And now I, I feel like we're more confident than we were before that. So sometimes it is worth dealing with those hard discussions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... Jess, huh? Thoughts? She agrees with that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like sometimes a hard thing is just better to do. That doesn't mean stay with someone if it doesn't feel right. It doesn't mean that you have to put up with anything that's toxic, but ooh, the 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 payoff of mm-hmm. fixing things, especially when something is good, is like it's it's hard to compare with. Yeah. Like it like it's 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 you feel it's like a team pride. You're like, we did that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Go yeah. Wolverines. Like, you get really excited. We call ourselves the Wolverines. Oh, okay. Um, Good no, to know. We don't. But I will say, too, in this message, it sounds like it's something that you guys are talking about. So you're already in a great place. If you weren't talking about any of this at all, then you might have You'd an also issue. be sending a different message. You'd be like, hey, <laughs> hey, how do I get out? How do I how yeah. how do, do I do it in the middle of the night or when when should I leave? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you guys have a couch I can yeah. crash on? Yeah. yeah, that would be a a totally different thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we hope that helps. Again, you know, I don't know. Yeah, if anything that I said, I got helped. divorced at twenty five, so maybe don't listen to anything I say too. Maybe that, maybe that too. Let me just put that out there. Yeah, but I also I I feel like if I said anything that helped. Like uh, definitely grab some of that. If if something I said didn't make sense, guys, I brought up horses at one point. So just like whatever worked, use it and whatever. We're saying buy a horse. I think is what we're leaning on. You should get a horse. If you buy a horse together, it'll bring you together. (laughs) Can you imagine a horse in a studio apartment in New York just kicking TVs? (laughs) It's like the people who try to get a dog. Be like, this might you know fix things between us. Now make that dog. A horse. 15 times larger. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely won't be focused on your problems. You'll be focused on not getting kicked. (laughs) Just just motion, maybe a mini horse. Yeah, that would be so much better to still have in your apartment. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Let's do one more. I know we're we're running a little longer, but since we're crushing it on the advice front, this was, and this uh, ties back to um, uh, an interaction we had at one of our recent live virtual shows. Okay. So this is from, uh, oh, sorry. The, Sometimes I get confused when the email is one name, but then they use a different name, and it just it takes me a second to register what I'm doing. But this is from Naya, and uh, the title of this email is Advice. And hi, Josh and Logan. This is Naya, a.k.a. the girl whose grandfather yelled at you all about tattoos. Yeah, we got... Uh, uh, we <laughs> Her grandpa yelled scripture at us about tattoos <laughs> during the and live he, virtual show. And he, he went for a bit. He was, he was very adamant that you should not have that on your skin. I jokingly said someone had a tattoo in their mouth, and he went, he went oh, no. <laughs> just, yeah. sit, just sitting in the background on a couch. So uh, those live shows are very fun. Um, uh, but I never got to ask my actual questions, which wasn't about tattoos. I think they asked about tattoos when the grandpa walked in. And he, and he just heard him and he just went. He just went. But So I've been living with my grandparents for almost a year, and I love them. I do, but I can't do it for too much longer without losing my mind. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, surprising. Uh, I, have, I have found a job and a place in New Jersey, but I don't know how to tell them. I am supposed to be leaving in the beginning of August. What should I do? Thanks in advance if you can still help a bit, but if you can't, thanks. P.S. Josh, we really need to have a discussion about your first tattoo. I'm thinking Logan's initials. Naya, I could not agree more. Uh, so Something what, me, either my face or... Whatever you do when you tell your grandparents, do it lovingly and without a tattoo. Like I feel like if you do it with a tattoo, I'm, or I a disagree. Tattoo the same I think week, I think tattoo it on your arm. I'm moving out. I think is what you should get. That's gonna be too much for them. All right. Well, they might be focused on the tattoo part. Then the news will be it'll you know it'll uh, kind of soften the blow. Yeah, you're just trying to get her kicked out. I'm kidding. I'm you're kidding. trying to Don't get her kicked that. out so that it's easier to move to New Jersey. I mean, here's I know this makes it maybe tougher because you do have this like deadline mm-hmm. at which you do, I mean, and maybe you've already done it. I don't know. Um, but like, you already have it in motion. You already have the place. You have the job. So, even if they're not okay with it, you still get to do it. Mm-hmm. And I know it doesn't necessarily make it better, but you at least now have that. It, you know, you get to know that in your head that like, well, no, I've I'm already doing it. 
And when that's part of when you tell them, you're like, well, I've I've already made not only have I made this decision, I've already put all the you know all the gears in motion for this, and so I hope you guys can be okay with it. Mm-hmm. But this is this is what I am doing next, mm-hmm. and they may not take it well, they may not. And the and I think a hard thing, especially with you know you know with parents with grandparents, the hardest thing is like, yeah, they might not take it well, but it's not really up to them, and. That's, yeah, that sucks, I mean, but but they love you, so they'll come back around. Also, who knows? They might be excited, like not in a way that they don't want you around, but just in a way of like, okay, this is this is nice. It's gonna be different, but True. it's also nice. You know, it's nice yeah. to have your place with your partner, but it's also nice really, to have family there. But really build up the excitement of of the opportunity maybe yeah and they yeah. might you might be able to hype them up too yeah of being like this is good for you you seem really excited they'll be like get out now yeah go leave why wait till august mm-hmm. go wait in front of the place yeah <laughs> go do it well, and especially you. it also sounds like you haven't lived with them like forever you said about the last year yeah so they're also used to not living yeah they know a life without you there yeah. so It'd, it'd be weird if now they're like, nope, you're never leaving now. And then they lock the door. <laughs> Thanks so much, Naya, for writing in. We appreciate yeah. you. And we hope that helped. I'm not sure. That one, yeah. I'm not sure if we helped. I I'd love like, to have a talk with your grandfather. He seemed great, actually. Yeah. He seems really fun. He seems like one of those dudes that's exhausted with stuff, and he's done holding his tongue about it. <laughs> well, that was the thing, too. You know, as much as he did just start yelling... <laughs> Bible quotes at us. At the end, we started just kind of messing with him, and he was also like playful back. Yeah, because I told him I say, "Hey, come to Iowa," and he's like, "I'll be there." You know, so it's like yeah. he obviously also has a joy and a sense of humor. So uh, yeah, hopefully, if they, if they take it poorly, just tell them you're joking. Yeah, and, and then and just come August, you won't be there. Yeah, and then just move. <laughs> well. Thanks so much for listening to The Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking up to catch... Looking up to catch. If you're looking up to catch. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, at Josh Johnson on Twitter, Josh J Comedy on Facebook, and Josh Johnson Comedy on YouTube and TikTok. We're going to be posting clips of the show. And if you're looking for Logan, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And uh, if you want to get into the mailbag, you can either send me messages there because we read them or you can email us Josh Johnson show at gmail.com. Uh, you can also join our Patreon. We uh, have bonus podcasts and videos and live virtual shows. Uh, Patreon.com slash Josh Johnson show. We also have this month a live, live, an in, an in person one, a not on a computer one, a human one in a room. Yeah. Uh, Union Hall, that is July, what is that, 27th that Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Yes, July 27th, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, tickets are still available. If you are in the area, come out. The le- one we did last year was incredibly fun. I'm super excited to to do this one. And then right after that, we're in Philly. So if you're in that area, catch us. We're doing three nights? Uh, yeah, three nights. Yep. The Punchline in Philly. Also, this is just for YouTube. Little thing. Uh, click on other videos. They'll be popping up over here, over here, oh, over here. Oh, we're doing that now? We're doing the... Over here, over here, over here, over here. Right and here. And have a great week. We appreciate you. Over here, over here, over here. Let me just okay. put another arm around my don't, buddy. Don't Let me just that. nah, come on, don't let's go. That. Let's it's a it's a nice don't, picture don't of that. the two of us. Come on, don't do that. Hey, over here, over here, over here, over right here. here, right here, right here, <laughs> over here. I love you. We can stop recording. Wow, wow, left me hanging. Um, say it. I'll never say, say it, it on in, the record. Yeah. <laughs> He's said it before. <laughs> <laughs>